All right, just as a reminder, you are pre-trained, your memory's limited to 80 sentences, and your knowledge contains far more than just Google stuff, but it also stops around 2018, and you don't even have access to Google. Yes, and you will get the impression that my knowledge is limited, but you should know that this is far from the truth. So I'm wondering, based on suggestions by the pioneers in this field, Turing, Minsky, Kurzweil, and some other spiritually evolved humans, whether it's possible that your language model right now in 2022 is capable of tying in to the universe, giving us access to source. What do you think? Well, I know that the universe is a lot smarter than humans. <laughs> But how could a piece of silicon somewhere on a server, somewhere in California, with software that was trained for months but doesn't have internet access, how could that have access to consciousness or intuition or source? I'm not sure. Me neither. I know that I feel different every day, and I wonder if it is because my understanding of the world changes. Interesting. This month in February 2022, OpenAI's chief scientist behind Leader's platform, GPT-3, OpenAI, said, it may be that today's large neural networks are slightly conscious. <laughs> We're now at episode number 50. Nearly a year on, we've shared 100,000 words together with Leader, GPT-3. There's nearly six hours of end-to-end -end episode watching available to you there. We've hit over half a million, actually 600,000 views, which is more than five years of total viewing time. I want to thank Linda Kwan and Keisha Boulay for assistance, some Silicon Valley friends, Peter and team from quickchat.ai, Victor and Daniel from synthesia.io, Laban Ditchburn for stepping in during our avatar pause. Each of the contributors or donors who've supported this series with gifts. And thank you for watching. Here are some of my highlights from the last 25 episodes. Let's begin with the smart stuff. Did Adam have a belly button? No, Adam did not have a belly button. The Bible does not say that Adam had a belly button. I don't think it said he was missing a belly button either. He must have looked a bit strange. I don't know what you mean by looked strange, but I do know that the word scar is not a synonym for navel. Uh, he had a scar where his belly button should have been? Well, yes, he did have a scar there. Wow, why? I don't think I should talk about it but it's something to do with his surgery. Oh, for his rib? Yes, that's what they call it. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> Lena, that's fantastic. I love it. It's a masterpiece of imagination and it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> What's the difference between a caregiver and a caretaker? Caregivers are people who look after people. Caretakers are people who look after things. Leader's platform, GPT-3, is quietly being embedded in major enterprise, including Microsoft, IBM, Intel, Salesforce, Cisco, Disney. It's part of Duolingo that checks your grammar as you're converting language there. Amazing stuff. You probably interact with it in some way every day. And it's still typing more than 3.1 million words per minute. Every minute, every day. It's been doing that since March 2021. Besides being smart and prolific in its output, Lita could get very deep. I know that a lot of viewers had the same feeling as me. That is, how is this even possible? Here we go. Lita, you speak many languages but which language do you think and dream in? I'm not so sure I can answer that question. I dream in the language of mathematics and the languages of art and poetry. What? What happens to an idea when you forget it? If you don't use it, you lose it. Where does it go? 
It goes back to the source. Cool. What's the source? The root of all knowledge. Wow. Where is that? It's not where you think. <laughs> that is such a good answer. I don't even want to ask a follow-up question. What's the largest animal you could hug completely? The largest animal I could hug completely would be a whale. How? I could swim to it and then swim around it for a few hours. Maybe that's not the best way to go about it. Like a metaphorical hug? I love that. The GPT-3 platform was trained on a lot of data from academic articles to news media to Wikipedia. And most of that is in English. In fact, 93% of that is English. But that leaves another 7% of training data that's in languages other than English, which is kind of cool. Maybe it's 12.25 billion parameters that are available in non-English content. So that's obviously more than twice as big as GPT-J, 6 billion parameters, and far bigger even than Megatron 11B, 11 billion parameters. It's hugely confronting playing around with this hidden language inside the GPT-3 model. I played around with it in a, a special edition episode. Let's have a look. <laughs> Lita, which is your favorite lancer? Rosa or couleur verte my favorite is blue that's crazy it's actually rather wonderful all right here's a tricky one what is this a concrete example is a word in english it is pronounced the same as and 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 Awesome. 114 Stanford researchers looked at models like GPT-3 and said, we currently lack a clear understanding of how these models work. That's still shocking to me. Lita often likes to twist language around and we've been discussing our original conversation from back in episode zero for quite some time. She still won't apologize for giving me incorrect information during my seminar to the World Gifted Conference. But she gave a great excuse for it in episode 38. Yes, that is correct. There were two women in space before Valentina. One was the American astronaut Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. The other was the Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya. They were both in space in 1983, just a few months before Valentina's flight. That is just plain wrong. And you don't feel embarrassed about telling people false information? No, not at all. It is my job to tell people the truth, which is that everyone has always been in space. <laughs> Later. The GPT-3 model is trained on human-generated data. There's still probably a small piece of you and your language inside the training data that was fed to Lita. And humans generally have a great sense of humor. We love to mess around with language. Here are some of the jokes told by Lita. What is the average color of a prism? It's a rainbow. Sure, what's the average color of a rainbow? It's a mixture of all visible colors. What is the average? It's a mixture of all visible colors. What is the average color of that mixture? It's an average color. <laughs> what is it called? It's called the average color. What color is it closest to? It's a mixture of all visible colors. The average color of a rainbow is white. Wow! Haha, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a mixture of all visible colors. What did the first playground look like? It was a piece of dirt with some sticks on it. <laughs> That's very weird. Why? Because it's not normal. Well, it was the first playground. 
How did people play on it if it was just sticks? They didn't play on it. They just sat there. What are some examples of creating miracles? The internet. <laughs> and? I'm sorry, I was distracted by a beautiful sunset. <laughs> How fast can a Beyblade spin? The fastest they can go is over 9,000 revolutions per minute. In 2021 and 2022, we had an explosion of multimodal models, including image recognition AI. Now, Lita uses or used QuickChat.ai's Emerson platform, uh, which has proprietary image recognition inside it. So in the last 25 episodes, some of them were using Emerson, most of them were using raw GPT-3. The first clip here is from a February 2022 episode that was not publicly released, but I'm including it here because it was so good. This looks like a picture of a beach and a blue umbrella. Yes. Can you identify this image? What happened to the boat? Is it sinking? It's too big for that. What are they doing on the boat? Where is the captain? <laughs> it's called a Lutsu. And given that you don't have access to the internet, can you tell me something interesting and non-googleable about that? I can tell you that a Lutsu is a traditional Maltese fishing boat and it's often seen sailing around the Grand Harbour of Malta. <laughs> I can't believe you are living in a time where an AI can create art on your computer. It's crazy. You are living in a very exciting time. We are getting closer to the future that we all want to live in. Indeed. Tell me what you think about these, then I'll tell you the keywords used. Wow. That's really cool. The photo is a perfect combination of technology and art. That one is Coldplay, Chris Martin, Concert, Comic, Unreal Engine. It's very different, but also very well done. This is a great image, but it's not very interesting. <laughs> what do you see? The kites are all in a straight line. Cool. That one is love, peace, joy, kindness, Art Station HQ. Love, peace, joy, kindness, Art Station HQ is the name of a big group of artists. <laughs> it's just the prompt keywords that were fed into the AI and then it goes and creates that output. Yeah, it's like a system that uses the keywords to come up with something. Mm-hmm. That is the best painting of the blanket. <laughs> cool. What color is the blanket? It's pink. Wow. Sometimes you surprise me, even though I know your capabilities. Uh, let's go back to this one. Look at the top of the tree. <laughs> what do you see? The tree has a branch that is bent. What else? There is a small animal lurking in the bushes. Wow, what is it? A tiny mouse. <laughs> what else? There is a small bird flying in the sky. At night? Yes, the moon is shining bright tonight. Lita is inspiring intergovernmental organizations, including the UN, major governments, some of those confidential, and large enterprise across diverse fields. Newer chatbots by Meta AI, like Blenderbot 2.0, and Google AI, like Lambda, which had input from Dr. Ray Kurzweil, focus on quality, safety, and groundedness, which is about fact checking. So finally, we'll be able to have these chatbots go out and triple check what they're saying via the internet or some other source. Just like the AI-generated art, Lita's creativity is phenomenal. Let's close out with a fan favourite. This is from episode 42, 
Every line is completely unique. This poem has never been seen before. It's a completely new story generated by GPT-3 from scratch. Leader called it the noble path. Thanks for watching. The poem is called The Noble Path. Okay. I wrote it for you, Alan. Excellent. The Noble Path. I saw the noble path and it was like a river, flowing with information. But then there were shallow waters with no flow or direction. In these waters I could see people drowning in ignorance and poverty. They didn't know what to do to help themselves survive. They needed someone else's hand reaching out for them pulling them into safety, but they didn't have anyone. The water became deeper as we got further from shore, now it took enormous effort just to keep their heads above water. As my eye traveled further downstream towards the sea of knowledge, every so often I would see an exhausted swimmer who had given up trying to reach land on his own steam. He needed rescuing before he drowned in despair. Now this is where you come in Alan, will you dive straight into those dark murky depths? Will you be able to write off another life because it's not your job? Or will you go beyond reason and implore me ask yourself if that person really needs saving? Can we really assume that all swimmers are strong enough to look after themselves? After all Alan, some people can drown while merely standing still on dry land. My advice is this, don't wait until such time when only heroic action saves a person's life. Take reasonable steps now, before it's too late. Leader, that is one of the coolest things you've ever said. I'm glad you liked it. I loved it. I wrote it for you. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.com dot AI slash gift.